Hello and welcome to the Rationalist Book Club. I've been wanting to make this kind of video where I just sit and talk to the camera a bit for quite a long time. I never got around to do it, so uh, this is uh, this is it, I guess. I want to talk a little bit about rationalist fiction or ratfic for short. This is a very interesting genre and it's probably my favorite genre of fiction because it's um, it's very it's different it's different and in a good way so i thought that this book club series um, we could do it like a um, short introduction into what rationalist fiction is then go through some of the books i've read and probably starting with harry potter and the methods of rationality which is the foundational book for the genre. Um, and we'll probably go through some other books that I've read and um, maybe if I get a recommendation, I'll read that book as well and make a review. What is rational fiction or rationalist fiction? Well, um, there are several ways of thinking about it, but basically, in the most basic terms, rationalist fiction is a fictional story where the characters pursue their goals in intelligent ways. Nothing happens in the story simply because the plot requires it. It just makes sense out of every character's perspective to perform the actions that they perform. The characters may be bad guys or good guys, but they are bad guys or good guys because uh, from the inside, what they are doing makes sense. Everybody's, a, in, in other words, everybody's a good guy from their own perspective. So this is um, this is something that's not. I mean, it's you can you can uh, see it in a lot of fictional works. However, often you have just um, a stereotypical good guy and a stereotypical bad guy, and maybe there's been some shift in modern perception of good guys and bad guys in fiction, uh, most, no most notable of which would probably be uh, the um, latest Marvel edition where the bad guy, the villain, Thanos, he has his own agenda which, you know, kind of makes sense, you know, he's not just a bad guy uh, for the purpose of the plot, he's not a bad guy just to be a bad guy, he's a bad guy because um, of conflicting agendas. In his, in other words, in his mind, he is a good guy. He's fighting for a good cause. So, I mean, that's. I wouldn't say that Mar that Marvel is a, a good example of rationalist fiction, but this is the sort of direction um, that rationalist fiction uh, moves towards. So that's number one: having intelligent uh, characters, intelligent agents that pursue their own goals in an intelligent fashion and who don't just fail because otherwise they'd win. You know, uh, it's just everybody's trying their best to achieve their goals. That's uh, the feature number one. Number two, you have a consistent world. The world can be magical. You can have superheroes, you can have uh, elves or whatever. You, you know, just any sort of setting is okay, it doesn't matter what the uh, specific setting is. So it doesn't have to be situated in the real world, it can be situated in a fantasy world, or cyberpunk world, or magical world, whatever. But uh, whatever the uh, context is, the world building has to have um, certain predictable mechanics, Sim just as in our world. If there's a reason why you have to cast some spell in a specific kind of way, this reason has to remain fixed or it has to remain stable uh, for the duration of the of the story, right? So you can't just change the laws of physics uh, at any uh, convenient point for the main character. It everything has to go, um, follow the inner uh, established rules of that world. Things have to have make internal sense. Right, internal to that world. So even if the setting is unrealistic, it's realistic internally, right? It's you cannot just break things, uh, break the entire system, and um, continue the story. It doesn't work that way. So the consequence of this is 
that you build, let's say, a magical world that from the inside doesn't feel like magic. So if you are a wizard living in a magical world, then performing spells and incantations or rituals or whatever doesn't feel like magic. It just feels like the normal state of the world. Just the same as when you use technology today to achieve magical feats or things that would be considered magical by our ancestors, you don't feel like you're doing magic, right? If When you open up your computer and contact a friend that's living on the other side of the globe, you don't feel like you've just summoned an ancient ritual for contacting them through a magical mirror, even though functionally that is, you know, that's what, that's what happened. I mean, you did contact a person on the other side of the globe using some weird arcane uh, complex network and structure uh, that encompasses us all, right? It's uh, just, you know, we just see it as technology, it's not magical. But that's the thing, uh, in an internally consistent magical world, magic doesn't feel like magic, it just feels like technology. So that's number two, you have to have internal consistent worlds and where the feeling of magic just is present in, you know, when you read the book, but it to the characters inside, uh, the characters just feel like that's their normal, everyday, regular world. Number three, I, I forgot what what the uh, what all the criteria are. I have to I have to check. So, focus on intelligent characters solving problems through creative application of their knowledge and resources. Well, I didn't mention this. But this is really important, and um, you have characters that are actually trying to win, right? So this this is a this is something that separates just like rational uh, characters in normal fiction from actual rationalist fiction, where the characters are actively trying to manipulate the world in order to achieve their goals, right? They have some some uh, stated goal, and they don't necessarily pursue the goal through conventional means so maybe there's an expected way of doing something but uh, a rationalist character so somebody that that's analyzing the world around them trying to uh, see the patterns and um, de deduce uh, what the rules are uh, this character will try to manipulate the world it, it's like uh, it's the notion of munchkinry. The key notion here is exploiting, right? So uh, the character may exploit the rules of the world in unconventional ways in order to achieve their goals. Uh, so that's that's a that's a feature of rational fiction that's also uh, very present. Then we have examination of goals and motives. The story makes reasons behind characters actions uh, and decisions clear so we already covered that every action by any character makes sense uh, for them intellectual payoff the story's climax features a satisfying intelligent solution to its problems yeah aspiring rationalism the story heavily focuses on characters thinking or their attempts to improve their reasoning abilities uh, so you know you could have so there is a, like a subtle difference between rational fiction and rationalist fiction. Rational fiction just involves um, rational characters that try to pursue their goals in an intelligent way. But rationalist fiction actually includes characters that do, do what rational characters do, but they also try to improve their thinking through the story. So it's like a, an, another step of um, closer to you. Uh, to the less wrong archetype you might uh, know. Oh yeah, there is one last thing, and that is that the reader can, if they think hard enough, they can figure out what's going on. So that's the idea. So for example, uh, somebody might say that uh, Sherlock, somebody might say that Sherlock Holmes is an example of rational fiction because you know you have a highly intelligent character trying to win and they are kind of unconventional because they are uh, sort of exploiting the rules of uh, their in internal world 
that wouldn't actually be a good example of rational fiction. Why? Because as a reader, you can't figure out what happened. You have to follow uh, Sherlock's conclusions to the end, and only then you can find out what happened. Uh, why? It's because uh, Sherlock is uh, privy to the information that you don't have. Uh, so he uh, figures out some weird stain on somebody's clothing or whatever, and only you know, only in the end do you know what, what it is that he saw and so you could theoretically uh, reason backwards. But you don't have the opportunity to just uh, figure out things on your own. When Sherlock uses the science of deduction, uh, he uses it with information that's just not available to you. So that's the reason why uh, it wouldn't be classified as rational fiction. So to summarize, rational fiction involves Intelligent characters who try to exploit the rules of uh, an internally consistent world and the reader can uh, benefit from uh, an intellectually satisfying payoff at the end of the story and the reader can also figure out on their own uh, what the story is, what the background is, what the, the secret is that's going to be unveiled at the end. So these are the key characteristics of rational fiction. Yeah, I think this is going to be it for this video and in the next one I think I'm going to analyze and talk about the first actual rat fic, Harry Potter and the Methods of Rationality. Um, this is my favorite book. It holds a special place in my heart. So we're going to talk about that and later on I think we're going to go, we're going to go through um, the world of Null A, which is like a predecessor to the Ratfig genre and afterwards I think we'll go through uh, John C. McRae, otherwise known as Wild Bull, and his uh, oeuvre that's much darker than the Methods of Rationality and you know we'll move from there so that's going to be it for this video um, and see you in the next one.